right. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. And uh, today I'm going to talk about um, mobilizing Joomla and uh, what we've learned in five years uh, with mobile Joomla and what we could expect next. I would like to have this presentation first, and I hope that uh, we can have a discussion um, afterwards and then discuss about things. <laughs> These are uh, based on my experience and personal thinking, but I'd like to get your opinion as well. Uh, to start with, uh, I'm Ur Kaner. Uh, I'm a user experience and mobility expert. Uh, I'm the founder of uh, Mobile Joomla and the Kuneri, uh, which is the uh, parent company. And uh, this picture is uh, while I was rocking when Ryan said Joomla. So uh, I think uh, it was um, we want to make the Mobile Joomla rock too. Um, when we look at, um, I want to start a little story. It's like uh, in 1988, when my father got me the first Zenit camera, um, I was really excited um, because it was my first gift from my father. Um, I started to take pictures. It was mostly family pictures. Then I started to see beautiful things and uh, even more beautiful things. <laughs> and uh, I started to appreciate beautiful things. In time, I figured out that um, you see lots of beautiful things around, but only certain part of it you can take, and it can create a meaning. So focusing in certain areas in a big scenery, you can actually take even more beautiful things, or you can change the whole meaning. This taught me that. Um, then in 1991, uh, I got another present, which was Commodore 64, which uh, got me into uh, computers, which actually get me also the computer engineering department in one of the universities. And uh, since uh, 1993 to 2005, I've been uh, experiencing a desktop, a laptop, and in the end ended up uh, a smart device. And uh, I completely fell in love. It was always with me. I could take her everywhere. I could look at her. She was beautiful. She could tell me. She could connect me here and there. And then it was really beautiful, and it got me challenged, because um, I used to design uh, websites back in then. But uh, when the uh, screen and it, everything is limited, it challenged me. Then I just started to uh, get into that more and more, um, because it was more puzzling for me. And uh, in 2005, I just uh, flew from home to Finland uh, because Nokia was there, and Nokia was one of the, uh, it was mobility, or the mobile was Nokia back then. And uh, I started to get um, beautiful things into mobile. So uh, seeing beautiful things, and then the mobile started to get me into creating really good things, faster, cheaper, and beautiful, because Nokia applications back then wasn't the best. So I created in 2007 and 2008 uh, some products which people could uh, build really beautiful looking applications for the mobile devices. And actually, Mobile Joomla is also one of them. Um, I think this is the first ever Mobile Joomla site we've done. And uh, it might be even like first commercial Mobile Joomla site, actually, for uh, Al Jazeera Children's Channel. And um, I think their website is still on if you go to jcctv.mobi. Uh, their mobile website is based on Joomla 1.0, of course. Is 1.0? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those guys are using because it works still very well. There's no problem about that. Um, and then in 2009, when smartphone things started to come up, uh, there were lots of challenges. And the challenges back then was even bigger than what we have right now. Because we were not only dealing portrait, landscape, tablet, and this, but we were also dealing about uh, multiple resolutions, multiple input methods. For instance, there's one device that has only keyboard, but it has portrait and landscape. There's one device that also has portrait and landscape with a really awkward resolution, but has touch and keyboard. So the world was much harder, and I think this is the first ever uh, responsive application or responsive um, design we got into. So there was only one application. You were but you were installing it, and it, it worked everywhere. So had time to experiment. Um, now, I just gave a little bit of background information about myself, actually more than a little bit. Now, I'd like to uh, know, get to know you. Um, how many of you are web designers and developers here? So quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, how, ma how many of you are Joomla developers, beside or only the Joomla components, the coding? OK. And uh, how many of you are content owners? Like. 
Okay, great. That's quite evenly distributed, actually. Um, now, mobile. Um, this has been the keyword, and uh, I would like to give some kind of uh, background information about the mobile from the way I see it. Who cares? Because there has to be something or someone who cares about mobile, or why, sh why should we care about it? First of all, how I see this is that it's not mobile we care about. It's about mobility. It's not about only one device. It's not only two devices. It's about mobility of uh, content because uh, in the end, sooner or later, someone who would like to uh, have a website, they would like to have an, create an access. So there has to be lots of people, and they have to, you have to get them to your store. It might be your content, it might be your product, but it is about creating access. So um, this is just an imaginary, half imaginary, half realistic figure here. Um, in 80s, 90s, when we wanted to buy something, we went to a shop. So it was all about getting people to a shop so that they could buy my products. And uh, in 90s, 2000s, um, people started to shop from PC as well. So they, they, no, need, they no longer needed to um, come to my shop. Actually, they could just go online, buy, and I could send the product to them. And uh, in 2000s and uh, in 2010, uh, 2010s, and uh, mobile devices and tablets started to emerge. So actually, they started to um, make it easier that I could also buy a product from my mobile phone. And in the future, we don't know. <clears throat> there might be consoles, TVs, cars, even refrigerators or sunglasses that people would be able to buy products. So mobility, from my point of view, if I have a product out there, I need to get people access it so, and make it easy for them so that they can purchase my product, they can reach my uh, content, or they can see what I need to tell to them. And a uh, couple of more uh, data here. Uh, mobile, uh, there will be more mobile internet users by 2015 than any other uh, desktop or wired devices. Um, so when the medium to access something or when the number of uh, people who are accessing uh, to data via a different device, we need to adapt to that. There will, this is a very clear um, example. I think it might be even earlier because uh, there are many uh, countries who skipped the desktops um, already. And uh, in 2011, actually, we had a very good indication towards that direction. There were more smartphones and tablets sold than desktops last year. So there are, uh, the demand is increasing, and the people who are using mobile devices to connect to internet or to get their daily uh, routines done is uh, every year increasing. Um, according to Google, for 2012, uh, there will be one billion people using their uh, mobile device uh, as primary access. So it's no longer the desktop. And at the same time, um, top 10 or 20 trending keywords, over half of the searches will come from mobile. So people, again, will be using their mobile devices to uh, search and to access content. And uh, they expect uh, over one million uh, global businesses going mobile with a mobile website. So I think this is a good market because um, one million businesses going to mobile with a mobile website means that some of these businesses will be using some um, technologies or platforms that we are um, familiar with. And paid search ad clicks generated by smartphones will be over uh, one quarter, which means that, yes, there will be um, mobile phones, uh, people clicking ads, paid ads from mobile phones will be more than one fourth. So uh, the usage also and the habits are going to that direction, to the mobility. So from my point of view, mobility is better, easier, and faster access to your content for more money, more fame, or for, uh, for better common goods, whatever is your aim. So mobility is essential for that. It can be via mobile website, or it can be anything that you can get people to access you. Um, I'd like to share uh, some data with you. Uh, because we've been doing this for a while and we collected some data. I think it's uh, the most convenient for me if I use Mobile Joomla as a case study. Uh, we started uh, mobilizing Joomla since 2008. It's like uh, quite many years ago already. Uh, first version uh, we released in, internally and then we, in 2009, we started distributing it uh, as an alpha 
and then beta and then uh, extensions we started to release last year and this year we are going more and more to the business side to maintain and expand our project further. Um, when we look at uh, Google Trends, actually in 2008 and 2009, there wasn't any actually indication that people were interested in mobile Joomla, which we can see, um, mobile and Joomla actually, which we can see from our data as well. But starting from 2009, there is an increasing trend that people are searching for mobility and Joomla. So uh, we expect this trend to get uh, a follow of this increasing uh, trend and uh, get even more, uh, more and more people are searching for that. Um, from our data in the search words since 2010 to 2012, uh, mobile and Joomla keywords are searched almost like doubled every year. And uh, same for the um, Android. Actually, Android uh, people are searching more Joomla and Android, seven times more than last year. And then Joomla and iPhone decreased. So this is probably indicating that um, mobility and Joomla actually are showing an increasing trend, but maybe devices uh, will be irrelevant at some time, because it's not only iPhone that we will be caring about, but there are many other devices as well. Um, and some of our installations uh, from end of 2009 to today, we have approximately over 10,000 installations a month, and that is increasing. And same for the community, we have 120,000 uh, community members now and we expect with the run rate is 250,000 by the end of this year. So it's like showing really increasing trend, which actually means that there are more and more people interested in mobilizing their Joomla websites. It can be a, a site owner, it can be a web developer, whoever, but there is a really interest. And um, we are serving some support ads on our website and or on the sites they are mobilizing, it's totally voluntary. And, uh, as you can see, we started to see really sharp incline uh, on the uh, number of ads served. Now we are serving 10 million ads a month, mobile ads. And um, this keeps on increasing, which also shows us that there are more and more mobilized websites or web pages out there, actually. And this is increasing. We, we already mobilized over, I think, cumulative over 20, 25 million pages, Joomla pages uh, in total. Uh, and when we look at our uh, visitor profile, this is also very interesting for any site owner because in 2010, only one and a half percent of our visitors were mobile device users. But in 2011, this uh, 10 times, 12 times, 16 percent of our website, mobilegymla.com, uh, people coming to mobilegymla.com were coming from the mobile device. And it, now, last month, it was 25 percent. And with that run rate, we are expecting it to be somewhere around 35 to 40 percent. So, this means two things. First of all, more and more people are visiting our site with Mobile Joomla, and uh, if you had a content that you could sell also on mobile, it would be a huge importance for you because 40% of the people, you need to sell something to them or you could sell something to them. Second thing is that what we've learned is that uh, this 25% of actually can be equal or even sometimes more than the m amount of revenue that you generate from web visitors. Because depending on your business, you can turn them into a client much easier because mobility might be the right time and right moment. If you have a restaurant, a person might be searching and trying to figure out where you are. And this third person might have much higher chance to come and visit your restaurant because they might be close by. Um, so I think it is safe to say that there is an increasing demand for, for Joomla and mobile. So what's the problem? Uh, the problem is that I'm, I've been in mobile business and user interface and experience and I've been creating products since 2005. And uh, mobile is a different world. When you get into that, you get the seed. Every rule is different. Uh, there are similarities, of course, but it's like an avatar world. The gravity is different, there is no oxygen, people look different, and there are a thousand million different species out there. So you need to know the grounds, and you need to learn the grounds. You will need to adapt the rules. Um, there are, when you are talking about the mobility of a product or a website or a Joomla site, you need to think thousand million things. You need to consider about your market, the data, the OEMs, the operators, hardware, experience, orientation, resolution, uh, size, platform. These will all matter if you're seriously doing a business. If you're BBC News, you cannot afford to 
uh, or actually even one or two percent of an improvement will make a huge difference in your product and visitors, which will reflect your revenue and sales. So it's a serious business, but there's lots of variables compared to any web uh, device or one device, single device that uh, you could create that for. Um, for instance, fragmentation. When we look at the iOS fragmentation for the resolution, uh, there are four different resolutions. Uh, when you look at the Android, uh, I even couldn't count how many of resolutions we have out there for Android devices. So it, it's like quite different, and this is only Android. Then we have Nokia's, then we have web devices, then we have iMode devices, depending on your region, especially uh, if you're, uh, I don't know, in Italy and in UK, Nokia is a very popular, for instance, uh, device. So you need to really get them into account because people might be connecting your website while using these devices. And uh, this is models, uh, there are uh, 3,997 uh, different uh, devices, Android devices out there right now. And um, this green one is the most popular one, but, and it is barely 5-10% of it. So, like, many different resolutions the, distributed over uh, thousands of devices, yes, you will, be, you will be failing, actually, to address some of them. But depending on your market and uh, depending on your visitors, this, you might be having your visitors from a small fragment of that as well. Um, there are solutions, of course. If there's a problem, there's always a solution. Um, the best or the easy solution is that you do nothing. You just completely rely on the mobile device's browser, and you just display your website as is. This is easy peasy, nothing to do, and you can get lucky, depending on your website. Then there is a, a, adjustment techniques, uh, which uh, the most popular one is responsive right now. So you have a content. You adjust your content based on the device that is displaying it. You don't do much changes about it. Then there's tailored solutions. This can be an application. Uh, this can be a tailored website, which usually requires server-side programming and components. And then there is somewhere in between. Uh, it is, um, uh, I think, new. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be called. It might be even uh, be considered in responsive in some day, but it's hybrid approach, which is called RESS. It's a responsive uh, design with server-side components, basically. So it's somewhere in between. And when we want to compare these two techniques, or actually three, uh, when you want to adjust, when you go to the adjustment way, uh, which is a responsive uh, design, uh, you adjust the, the content based on the device's viewport. There is usually a single implementation. You can go uh, with. And then there is a common user experience, common features, common content, and common data. So all the data you display with different adjustments on one device. And um, most of the cases, uh, since the templates are uh, created for generic purposes, the uh, experience is fair to average. Uh, because, uh, I mean, for mobile, it is rarely you can succeed with a generic solution. So something fits to some cases, but something won't fit. So the performance is usually average. Uh, but there is also some cons. For instance, lim limitation of CSS media queries. Some devices simply don't uh, support it. And depending on the, your visitor profile, you might have problems. Uh, image resizing, for instance. Uh, most of the responsive design do not usually consider about it. If you considered, it would be uh, RESS. Uh, and if you do not do proper image resize, uh, res resizing per device, it would mean more CPU and memory uh, requirements from a device, which would uh, consume the battery faster, which would mean that before uh, your visitor, I'm just exaggerating, but before your user is uh, browse, browse 10 uh, pages, their battery would be dead already. Uh, and then the speed. Basically, with a responsive design, most of the, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the you download, the user has to download all the code. Doesn't matter if they use or not. So if you're visiting with your iPhone, you also download the CSS, JavaScript, or other elements of the desktop machine. So the size is actually a problem too, because in some countries, the data is much more expensive. Still, flat rate is not, especially if you're roaming. Uh, try to go, uh, like, I know, because one and a half megabytes cost one euro for me to hear, and uh, I know that data will be very important for me. Uh, because I wouldn't be able to visit a website that is heavily loaded. And then the user experience, 
But there are also certain cons because there are specific use cases for some businesses that you need to uh, show or hide certain content. Um, there are many much debate about that, but uh, the truth is that, yes, there are use cases for that. And then tailored design, when we look at, this usually requires uh, server-side programming. You design it per device. You think about an iPhone. You think about the profile of an iPhone user. You think about the profile of an Android user. Then you make your design based on the market, based on their location and everything. You can even go even more detailed. And then you, then you implement per device. There are certain implementation differences. For instance, if I wanted to create my website as an application mode on iPhone, uh, I would need a back button uh, on the software. But displaying that button on Android would be meaningless because people, there's a hardware key, key button, a back button there. So the, there's certain implementation differences or uh, depending on the device capabilities, you have to uh, uh, implement different things. And um, the uh, tailored user experience and the, the features are tailored, the content is tailored, and the data is tailored, like squeezed to the uh, last bit. And the maximum of this comes with the maximum opti optimization and performance for the uh, uh, result, as a result. But of course, there are certain cons, which means that there's more design work, uh, there's more development work, uh, the cost is more, and you need, of course, a little bit more time. And then RESS comes in between. Uh, it is said to be the taking the best of the both worlds, which is true most of the time. But in the end, you're leaning towards the tailored design with a responsive template. So uh, I don't think that there's a consensus there yet, but it's, I think, a good methodology. You could uh, combine both. Uh, when, when we look at Mobile Joomla, basically we are uh, targeting tailored design, which means that you could create a tailored experience for device family uh, with less effort, so you could mobilize your Joomla site. And actually, you could get with Mobile Joomla a responsive, or you could turn a responsive template with Mobile Joomla to an RESS. Because as soon as you install Mobile Joomla, and you tell Mobile Joomla to uh, load your template per a device family, uh, Mobile Joomla will take care of all the image rescaling, so you don't need to care about like the width or height, it's just always 100%. But Mobile Joomla will rescale and serve the right image size. We just made a very simple test before uh, I, we came here. Uh, we tested one very popular um, responsive template, and uh, the data of the main page was one and a half megabytes, and we just then tested it with Mobile Joomla. The data dropped down to 500 kilobytes, so it's three times uh, better performance in a way. And nothing is needed. You just execute the responsive template on a Mobile Joomla. And you can even like fine tune this and that, so that's possible. How does it compare? I mean, I know now we are in these, these times where the responsive is a really hype word, and uh, I think it's something really normal and natural. So I just like, I'm trying to imagine and create an analogy in my mind. What's the difference between doing nothing and responsive and a tailored design? So I'm thinking if I didn't do anything, uh, so if I didn't cr prepare anything uh, as a, for my website, and I just had a suit uh, on me, and if I went to a business meeting, Yes, it works. If I went to a date, yeah, it could, depending on the situation, it could work too. But if I went skiing with my suit, oh damn, I'm, I'm gonna have troubles there. Or if I went swimming or sleeping with my suit. So there's going to be many use cases where me being unprepared will create trouble to me. I'm, I'm gonna fail uh, to do the right thing in the right occasion. Uh, same for the responsive design. Actually, it fits or half fits, for instance, in certain cases. Um, how I see responsive design is that I have, I prepare a big luggage with me. I take any kind of, I, I try to imagine use cases, then I take my luggage with me. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go skiing maybe, I could go clubbing as well, but I have my luggage, I have all different kind of uh, uh, dresses with me. Then I go, okay, I figure out that I have to go to a business meeting, lucky I have a suite, but I have to go with my luggage there, getting all of my other dresses as well. Then I have to go to a date, lucky again I have a suite but I have to carry my luggage wherever I go with my date. That's fine. Um, then I have to go skiing. Ooh, uh, figures out, okay, I forgot my skiing jacket and pants. What could I do? Okay, I could wear my jeans and jumper though, yeah, but it's gonna really get me in trouble. But again, I will need to ski with my uh, suit luggage. And uh, while I go swimming, what could I do? Okay, doesn't matter, I have my boxes, so I can take all of my things. It's gonna be a little bit embarrassing, but it's gonna be fine. And, but I need to swim with my luggage again. 
And um, sleeping, I can always go naked, uh, but I need to sleep with my luggage, sorry. Uh, so uh, responsive, I, can, I see it's a kind of situation like that. Of course you can survive, but you will have a luggage to carry everywhere. And you will always need to emphasize whatever occasions can come, then your luggage will be heavier and heavier. For the tailored design, what you do is that, okay, you know where you're going to go, you dress, and then you go there. So no luggage, you know where you're going, targeted totally. So you know that you're going to go to business meeting, you go home, you wear your suit, you go to your business meeting. You know you're going to go to date, you know what kind of a girl you're going to meet, you wear smart casual, you go to your date. You're going to go skiing, you go home, you, you wear your skiing suit, you go to skiing, no luggage, nothing, then you enjoy it. Of course, it's a little bit costly. Why? Because you need to think, you need to know, you need to have the right equipment, but it's best case. Uh, who would uh, go to uh, skiing with jeans and jumpers? I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of a natural thing when we think from such kind of an analogy. But I think this is uh, quite similar to what we have from a tailored design to responsive to having no design at all. Um, how do we do this? Uh, as I said, we always think user experience first because um, sooner or later, it's going to come to a point where we will need to consider, it's because, because it's all about people, it's about, all about visitors. It's not about how our website performs or not. It's about how our website performs, looks, feels usable for the people. So we always think about people first. Who are we going to serve this website to? What are they going to be feeling? At around what time they might be doing this? So it's like a little bit people first thinking, not mobile first. And uh, then it has to be tailored. We always believe that tailoring things, like tailoring the use cases, what kind of use cases, tailoring audience, interface, what functionality has to be there. Uh, there has to be look and feel, interaction. All has to be for the right time, right moment. For instance, a couple of examples I can give. When I go to JMB on site from my iPhone, um, there is an iPhone application available. Why it doesn't show me right up front there? But if I tailored that, okay, people who are visiting J and Beyond website, there is an application which could make their uh, world easier. So I could put it right up front, but I could put the content below that. Or yesterday I was checking a responsive template about Bootstrap. There's a download button. Uh, what am I going to download on my iPhone with the Bootstrap? I'm confused. So I shouldn't be probably showing it. So it has to be, I have to think what people would need, why they would be visiting. Uh, it's, it's a similar analogy again. Uh, if I'm a car salesman, if I see from the window a guy coming from an Opel Vectra, and uh, I probably can guess what kind of a car they might be needing, then I could make the right offers. If I, if I see a guy who is coming with a Lamborghini, then I probably wouldn't push that to sell an uh, Opel Astra to that guy because it would be irrelevant. Probably that guy wants a better car. So knowing your customer will help you to sell it better or what actually they might need. Um, I've been there for a while, as I said. This is uh, how it usually happens. Um, market saturates at some point, like the, the market gets major. Uh, which means that currently the web market got major. Like it, 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 there were times where we were experimenting with this and that and everything. Now everyone knows approximately how things work and they prepare their services, but there's lots of competition. But then it is time for a user experience because then small bits and pieces make difference. Same with the mobile. Uh, we are now uh, going there. We are not there yet. The market hasn't saturated yet. We don't know the common uh, practicalities, uh, patterns yet. Uh, so user experience is not that detailed or doesn't matter so much now, that much. Of course it matters, but it doesn't matter for majority of the people. So we are somewhere in the middle where responsive will do it in most of the cases. If you have a responsive, like um, get a responsive template, you probably would be able to survive quite easily. But in a couple of years, I'm talking about one to three years of time, when, because mobile is moving always very fast. Uh, when there is more competition, when you figure out that actually there are more and more mobile users, when you figure out that your competitor is selling 30% more uh, products than you just because they have a better performing mobile site, people will start uh, prioritizing user experience and start seeing those bits and pieces where 
then the thing's going to go from responsive to maybe RESS, but then we're going to end up in tailored sooner or later, such as what we, this is the case for uh, web as well. We don't have, we rarely have generic solution. We have to fine tune, and things are given. There are uh, frameworks, there are things that could make our lives better and easier and everything. Um, of course, what we do is that we add value. We want to add value because you want to add a value to your clients. It's the same thing. From our point of view, if you're a web designer or developer, we serve the needs because uh, you probably have a client where you need to satisfy, so you need to take care about optimized experience, you need to take care about, be, be aware about the, uh, the speed, this and that, so you have to be able to uh, fine tune things in a much advanced level, so we help you for that and add value. And if you're a template designer, we save, t we save time and effort. You can keep on doing your responsive template and do not think about the server side components at all because just it's going to be very simple. So you can uh, concentrate on what you're doing. We are improving performance and we cooperate. We, we, we do not really against anything. And then for the content owner, we can keep it simple. We have a Joomla blog. You install it. Okay. 80% is there, you can start fiddling around, ta-da, it works. And uh, you save hundreds, sometimes thousands of euros uh, from such kind of a simple um, setup or uh, solution. Uh, we make it better, you can always make it better with uh, adding this and that extension, and uh, you can improve your business. Because say that I have a, a website where I make money with my affiliate sales plus my Google AdSense, and maybe I am selling an ebook on top of it. Uh, but uh, for instance, uh, Gabe, for instance, knows very well like if there is an ad and if I don't have a mobile website or if I do not highlight, highlight it, the conversion will be really, really low. People will not see it because it's all uh, prepared for a PC desktop device. But if I had a mobile version where I could highlight these money-making elements on my mobile website, if I could put it in the right place, the conversion rate would go skyrocket uh, compared to not doing anything. So basically, it's going to improve the business uh, quite a lot if you uh, do the right thing. Uh, and the same for the Joomla developer. Actually, this is what we're um, experimenting, excited about a lot, because there are t almost 10,000 extensions out there, some of which are, actually, quite a lot of them are free. Um, with mobile Joomla, we are trying to help those component and extension developers to generate money. Why? If you have a we, we now uh, partnered up with Kunana guys, and same with the J comments. Those guys don't do and they don't make any money, but they're so enthusiastic and so like excited about things. They keep on doing their business, uh, sorry, uh, product, but they don't receive much money out of it. But what we do is that you can always give your product is free for the desktop, but if you want mobile version, it comes with uh, some cost. Same with the Spotify. Uh, if you listen Spotify on desktop, it's almost free. You can listen as much as you want, or maybe there's some time limitation, but if you want to have it on your phone, then you, you should start paying $9.90 a month. So this business model, I see that within a year or three, uh, I, it might not even take that long, this is going to be a business model that's going to start replacing the traditional business models. Why? Simple. Everyone will need a mobile version. You know that. You give the desktop version for free, and you offer uh, mobility with the paid version. So. If a person is caring about mobility, it means that they have some uh, benefit to gain, which means that they are ready to pay for it. But if you're not ready to pay for it, they wouldn't pay for anything anyways. So I think it's going to be a viable business model for uh, many people out there, not only for Joomla extension developers, but we take our part there and uh, try to help uh, as much as we can. And as soon as we prove our case with um, a couple of uh, case studies, uh, we hope that this starts to uh, get its place uh, further and further. So basically, that's it. Um, I wanted to give a brief information about my experience uh, and our experience regarding mobilizing Joomla since 2008, 7, or whatever, and then just try to give some idea how I see that it could be uh, in the next years, upcoming years. Not, but thanks uh, a lot for coming and joining. <laughs> uh,